Thank you for joining us. We are on location in Skokie, Illinois for an interview with Mayor George Van Dusen to discuss this vibrant, growing community, followed by an interview with Martha Schwartz of the Doubletree Hilton discussing community affairs and so forth. We'll meet them both following these messages. With us now is Mr. George Van Dusen, Mayor of the Village of Skokie. It's a real pleasure and privilege to have you on the show, sir. Thank you. Great to be with you. This is a rather historic place uh, in the Chicago area. Tell us a little bit of the history of Skokie. Well, the Village of Skokie was first established uh, by state law in 1888 and pretty much was a farm-type community, suburb of Chicago until around uh, the end of the Second World War, and then it underwent a huge population boom. Uh, and since then has grown substantially, not just in terms of our population, we're about 65,000 people right now, but even more so in terms of our local economy. Uh, we have two major retail centers, several uh, grocery outlets, huge outlets, as well as uh, uh, office buildings. So, and we have uh, also uh, manufacturing in the village. So we have a very balanced, mature uh, local economy. Uh, and it, it's a village that is uh, middle, middle class for the most part. Our schools are among the, the finest in the state of Illinois. Our library uh, is perhaps the best public library in the state, a real treasure, won the National Gold Medal uh, just a couple of years ago as one of the five best public libraries. Our parks, our Excel, they also won the National Gold Medal as being among the best uh, local parks in the country. So it's, it's a great community uh, to live in. Like anywhere else, we have our challenges, but uh, we have very open, very transparent government, and we try to meet those challenges. And our philosophy is meet a problem when it's small, head on, so it doesn't get out of control. And, uh, and I think if you take that kind of incremental political risk, uh, it, it serves everybody in the long run. Well, speaking of addressing challenges, the last winter was a spectacularly <laughs> icy one, I understand, so that must have been quite a challenge right there. It was, uh, and it, it's the kind of challenge that has a duality. Uh, during the winter itself, we had more snow than we've had in probably 20 years. Uh, but we, we have a first-rate public works department. It's unparalleled. Uh, in fact, we're one of only a couple municipalities in the country, we were the first actually, to have a fully accredited public works department, health department, police and fire departments. No, only one other municipality in the United States can make that boast. Uh, our public works department did a phenomenal job. So from a farming community of years ago to a modern town now, with a beautiful retail center outside, I see like a mall below. We are here at the Doubletree Hilton Hotel here in Skokie and beautiful hotel and a beautiful environment, lovely area to be in actually. I'm really enjoying being here. Tell us a little more about the history. Skokie, I think it's fair to say, is probably the second most diverse community in the state of Illinois. Chicago would be the most diverse. We have uh, over 90 different identifiable ethnic groups uh, who live in the village from all over the world. Uh, it, it, there isn't a place in the world that you can't mention that we don't have a group here in the village of Skokie. Uh, we have close to anywhere from 75 to 100 foreign languages spoken in the homes. 
uh, this is a great source of strength for us. Uh, this coming weekend, we will be having our Festival of Cultures. Uh, it's going into its, uh, I believe this year is our 23rd year, and it celebrates uh, our diversity. Uh, and, and it's a way of bringing the entire community together. It's a unique festival in the state. We get in the neighborhood of 25 to 30,000 people uh, coming to the village, and there are various uh, dancing, singing, uh, dramatic performances, booths, food, you name it, we have it. Uh, it's a great festival. But it's a source of great strength to us and to our country, I think, as the United States becomes more and more integrated with the rest of the world. You know, the world is shrinking. Our young people must become part of that new world economy. And the best way to do that is through the young people that we have in our schools. Uh, it's a challenge as well because many of the young people who come to Skokie do not have English as their first language. So we first have to teach them English and at the same time, in a parallel track, give them a normal education, reading, writing, math, science, uh, all of the important subjects. Uh, I'm partial to history because I teach history part-time at Oakton Community College. Uh, and in my class this semester at Oakton, I have two classes, one history, one American government. Uh, more than 50% of my classes, I would say, are first generation from outside the United States. Many of them, at least 50%, do not have English as their first language. And yet, they're very ambitious. They want to make something of themselves. And that is something that we all as educators uh, have to take into mind as we educate the young people. So it's, it's a challenge, but when somebody finishes their elementary, middle school, and high school education here in Skokie, they're prepared uh, to go on for life. Four-year college, community college, uh, maybe they want to go into some specialized training, or enter the workforce directly. But I think we prepare our young people very well. And uh, we're, we're proud of our, we're proud of the village and we're very proud of our diversity. I might also just m give another plug. We have a program uh, that was started by uh, five women in the village, uh, one of whom is my wife. Uh, the head of our library, the head of our high school district, head of the Indian community in the village, and the uh, woman who owns and runs our Holiday Inn. Uh, they formed a group called Coming Together in Skokie with the idea that each year, as a village, we would come together and celebrate and study in a very intense way one particular culture. Uh, and we do it in terms of learning the cuisine of the country, learning the history of the country, something about the language, the dance, the culture. Uh, we have celebrated several different cultures now, and every year we present in the neighborhood of 50 separate programs over six weeks celebrating these cultures. So we try to embrace the diversity and bring everybody into our government as well as um, into our economy. Speaking of education and the outstanding facilities and institutions you have here in Skokie, it's my understanding that you personally were instrumental in enabling the Holocaust Memorial Education Center to build a facility right here. It's one of my proudest achievements. I felt very strongly that the Illinois Holocaust Memorial and Education Center should be in Skokie because of the history. Uh, there was a world famous attempted march by the American Nazi Party, the Illinois Division here in Skokie in the late 1970s. And out of that 
became a movement to memorialize the Holocaust, the idea of never again. Uh, we had in Skokie in the 1970s the largest number of Holocaust survivors in the world outside of Israel. Uh, and it was a transforming experience for the village of Skokie. A Holocaust foundation was established, uh, a museum was created, sort of a storefront. But the dream for us was to actually have a world-class museum that would tell the story of the Holocaust but also have an influence on young people to, as we say at the museum, to understand the past and transform the future. And by telling the story of the Holocaust, we believe that we can help influence young people. Uh, and, and obviously we, we want to have an influence on adults as well. Uh, we began the campaign uh, and uh, raised the money, uh, secured the land, uh, and we purposely chose a piece of land that is adjacent to a forest preserve. So in a modern environment, an urban area, you could still have at least a little bit of a contemplative quality to it. You asked me to talk about a very favorite topic of mine. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. I think it's outstanding that Skokie has this museum right here, and the history, of course, is very important. But what are the plans for the future? What plans do you see uh, for Skokie's future? Well, it's going to be a very exciting time over the next five years for the village of Skokie. We have several major economic developments going on. Uh, we have a major uh, Mariano's uh, retail outlet coming in. Uh, we're in the process of building it right now. Uh, it's a, uh, Mariano's is a new grocery chain that's new to the state of Illinois. And they're going to be building one of their signature stores here, approximately 80,000 square feet with a couple restaurants and of course the ubiquitous bank. Uh, we also have a Walmart going in, uh, not too far from the Mariano's. Uh, these two projects will be coming to fruition in the very near future. Mariano's end of this year, spring of next year, Walmart as soon as July of this year. A floor decor, which is a project that I'm especially excited about. Uh, that will be coming in uh, the spring of next year. Uh, our downtown area is now getting transformed. If you would visited the downtown area five, ten years ago and hadn't been back, you won't recognize it. Uh, we've done a complete streetscaping. Uh, the downtown area is now in the final stages of that streetscaping, which means uh, all new planters, sidewalks, all resurfaced, uh, modern landscaping, etc. Uh, we've also created, as part of the downtown, the Illinois Science and Technology Park, which is a high-tech park, nanotechnology, pharma, biotech. We have around 23 companies in the park now, and that is really humming. Uh, we just started a interesting, one of the most interesting projects I've had a chance to work on. Uh, it's a nanotechnology education program, and it's a collaborative effort between Forest City Enterprises, the developer of the tech park, and Oakton Community College. And uh, Oakton Community College is using the tech park for its nano laboratory, and it's, we've created a four-course program which we're hoping will become a degreed program for young people to learn to become nanotechnology technicians and to go to work in the park. We have uh, five or six nanotechnology companies in the park now. Uh, and th right now there is approximately 1,300, I think we'll be up to 1,400 employees by the end of the summer. So it's an employment-based 
that is connected directly to the downtown area. And as a spin-off of all of this development, uh, we have now approximately 45 to 50 new businesses that have come into the downtown area. Several ethnic restaurants, uh, as well as boutique areas and so on. Uh, so that has really begun to take off. It's taken us three or four years of planning and getting the, the money in, in order, but it's all there and it's, it's being done. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. Up north, uh, one of our signature shopping centers, Westfield Old Orchard, which goes back to the 1950s, the, uh, the famous Phil Klutznick uh, created it. And that is now being rejuvenated. Uh, Westfield Corporation has put in uh, $50 million into the shopping center in just the last couple of years. Uh, and you've got to keep doing that kind of thing. And, and so there's a spillover effect uh, when these major projects get done. Um, we, we have a, one of the crown jewels of the village is the Skokie Hospital. It's, what, it's our major employer in the village, actually. Uh, they are putting in 120 to $150 million into the hospital, upgrading its surgical procedure area. They've just constructed an ambulatory care building. They're now doing uh, uh, outpatient surgery uh, renovations. Uh, and I think the reason that a lot of this is getting done is we have a vibe in the village that is friendly to business, it, it, but it, you don't have to be a small, you don't have to be a big business. You go to the downtown area, it's all mom and pop small businesses. There's not a single chain, not a single big business there. Um, and so we have a nice mix to our economy, I think. And this, of course, helps the schools, it helps our parks, and it helps our residents. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that through what I think is good planning, we have been able to freeze the village's portion of the property tax for 23 years. Uh, in 1990, we levied $15.4 million. Today, we levied $15.4 million, not a penny more than we did in 1990. And we do that because we think it helps the schools. We think it's a benefit to our businesses. So I think over the next five years, there's going to be a lot of economic development. And we're sitting today in the Doubletree Hotel, and this is a perfect example of the kind of new rejuvenated development that has undergone in the village in the last couple of years. And it's a perfect example of this whole area where we are, the old orchard, the shops at Orchard Place, the Performing Arts Center, which is just immediately to the south of us, and the Doubletree Hotel. Uh, this whole complex came about because of cooperation between the business community, the village, uh, and some very good, conscientious developers. I must say this is really a very exciting community, so vibrant and down-to-earth, yet high-tech. and. What transformations from the early start to the days of technology and all the things that you are envisaging and actually seeing coming to fruition. A real pleasure having you on the program, sir. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Welcome to Skokie. Thank you, sir. I'm here at the Doubletree Hilton in Skokie, Illinois, to interview a number of leaders in this vibrant suburb of Chicago. One of the essential components that enable good organizations to meet and do their work is a place to meet and have their conferences and events. This is why we're here at this fine hotel. And to tell us more about hospitality in this area, we'll meet with Martha Schwartz right after these messages. Mm -hmm. 
With us now is Martha Schwartz. It's a real pleasure to have you with us today, Martha. It's wonderful to have you here. And I want to thank you for your hospitality in enabling us, The Shalom Show, to produce half a dozen programmers right here, right now in Skokie, Illinois. And I love the cool weather. It's such a nice contrast from the horrible heat in Florida. Oh, but I was thinking of Tel Aviv sunshine. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, back to what we are here for. As I said in the introduction, organizations, families need a place to conduct their events and celebrations without a wonderful hotel such as this, so perfectly located in the middle of Skokie. Uh, many of these things couldn't happen. Tell us a little bit about hospitality here in Skokie, Illinois. Skokie is in an amazing location. We're really right in the heart of the Jewish community, so we can do every kind of life cycle, any kind of simcha. Uh, we work with Jewish organizations. We're really in the backyard of everybody's home, so we're the ideal location, and we love working on Jewish events. I understand there's uh, a kosher floor and kosher facilities here as well. Yes, we have our own in-house kosher kitchen, which is really unique. So uh, for the kosher traveler or guest, it's, it's not a big deal. We can take care of it seamlessly. Uh, Shabbat, which can sometimes be really hard when you're traveling, is really easy here. Well, certainly having kosher facilities is a unique and important thing. But please tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my background actually as a child, I was an actress, so I always loved drama and productions. And um, I came to the hotel over six years ago and it kind of fed my love of events and people. And it's fascinating to work in a hotel and uh, every day is different. And I love working with people on their, um, parties, events, simkas, it, it's, it's really fun. Tell us mm -hmm. of some of the memorable events that you uh, can bring up and uh, share with our audience if possible. Actually, one of the um, groups we had was the Hidden Child Survivors of the Holocaust. And the whole hotel had, we had about 400 survivors and we did many breakouts and it was just like having family here. They felt very comfortable. It was very moving for me. Uh, our whole staff was giving them hugs and we just loved it. it. It just felt very personal and it was a great connection. At this table yesterday I interviewed Sam Harris, oh, the founder of, of the Holocaust Museum. Yes. And as a child of Holocaust survivors myself, I relate very closely to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. This is all very interesting to me. And I also noticed, speaking of your hotel's facilities, you have a conference center and convention center type uh, facility as well. Tell us about it. Uh, yes, we have the gold standard in conference centers. We're actually IAC approved. Um, we have the rating of the International Association of Conference Centers, which means we're really geared for education and training. Case in point would be like Ergonomic chairs are so important in a meeting. That comes with our IAC star. Uh, we have whiteboards, we have temperature control. Uh, it comes in a package that all any meat, food need would be in the package. Um, it's just really great for the planner. There's no hidden charges. And the result is the attendees leave the meeting refreshed. Um, motivated, they actually learn something because they're in the perfect environment to have a meeting. And uh, our clients love it. Speaking of learning something, by working here in this diverse community with d events, different ethnicities, you'll have events and parties that may be Asian, uh, Jewish, South American. You know, hotels can't assume that everyone's gonna have a generic uh, wedding. The, the country is global. Uh, we do South Asian weddings, kosher events. I mean, really, the sky's the limit. You know, it's interesting. One day I had two weddings and a funeral. I, I book every life cycle, and um, I may have an Indian wedding tomorrow, uh, kosher Shabbaton on Friday, uh, and every day I learn something. I learn about a ritual. I learn about something unique to the culture, and it's quite fascinating. Skokie is one of the most diverse communities in the country. So I, I always ask if I don't know. How exciting that this village, the village of Skokie, is now evolving into quite a city. It is a city, and um, we're a city on the North Shore, but we're also very near Chicago. 
It's very multicultural and what's really great about our location is we are close to Chicago. It's very easy for our guests to go downtown and go to Water Tower, go to Michigan Avenue. We have a shuttle that will take them right to the L, which is our subway, or the Metra. Um, it's, it's a very easy, easy access here to get downtown. And then come home here and be cozy in our great hotel. I noticed that there are all sorts of renovations taking place in the hotel. Tell yes. us a little bit about this. I love the vibe. We just renovated our lobby. It's got beautiful modern furniture. We're wired. I mean, the guests can come right in, plug in their nook, plug in their laptop. We've got a fireplace. Every night we do a wine hour, a wine and cheese hour for our guests, and they love it. They just want to sit and hang out in our lobby. It's very alive, and it's really welcoming, which is great. Well, on that happy thought, I want to thank you very much for being with us today, and we'll have to do this again sometime in the near future. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank, thank you, you, Richard. This brings us to the end of our special program for today from on location at the Doubletree Hilton in Skokie, Illinois. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.